Yeah, I mean, this is really, to be frank and honest with you, and I hate to be this blunt, but it's a pathetic strategy. They've lost every single marriage member in the country, except for one state in Arizona. What they did in Arizona is we've got to change our strategy. We have to scare senior citizens in. So they will not debate the policy merits of whether or not gay marriage is in the best interest of children and families in the common good society. That's the bottom line. It's a scare tactic. They've done extensive polling. They're throwing anything they can throw up to the thing to try to distract you from the real policy issue here. Our motivation is to protect basic human institutions that set a lot, that really is cute, that, that they, they provide the socialization for children. It's very important. Marriage is like the air we breathe. It's something that you can't see, but yet it's all around us. And when you alter air, it's basically like the restructuring, you realize how important it is. And so it is with marriage. When you begin to tamper with marriage, there's really no end to the kind of aberrant forms of marriage that people want to bring to the table. Uh, and if marriage means anything, then marriage means nothing. You know, at some other juncture, I can't believe we debate you on that, but right now we're here to talk about Amendment 2, and Amendment 2 has nothing to do with eliminating uh, the ability for same-sex couples to marry. That's already the law in Florida. I'm here to talk about what it will do, because, John, you know, as well as I do, when people understand what this amendment does, what it takes away, what it blocks, they say no. And even, you know, and, and I think people are really getting tired of the kind of mean-spiritedness uh, in, in political discourse. And they're, they're tired of a, a kind of spiteful way of thinking that if anybody else gets something, it's taken away from you. I don't know how many people in this room are married, but, you know, somebody's got to explain to me how passing this would somehow protect your marriage. What is, what is the threat to your marriage? If this passes, will you, I mean, if it doesn't pass, will you suddenly, you know, divorce? Will people suddenly, you know, rush to become domestic partners? Uh, Form same sex relationships? No, of course not. I mean, it's, it's misnamed, but it's intended to appeal to fear. And that's what we have to get past. We have to get past the fear, the anti gay sentiment, and get to the heart of the matter. This is about taking benefits away. And taking benefits away does not, from other people, from their families, does not strengthen anybody else's marriage. What is, your, what is your response to his argument that that is the best for children and families? Why, why do you feel that that's not the issue being debated here? Well, again, uh, you know, the day before this election, same-sex couples can't marry. The day after this election, same-sex couples can't marry. So the question all of us have to ask is what is on the ballot? What, what is at stake for us? And what is at stake for us are basic protections. When a, when a lesbian couple came to, to Fort Lauderdale on vacation and one, of, and one partner collapsed from a brain aneurysm and they were rushed to the hospital, she was prevented from being able to be at the side of her loved one uh, because one of, the, one of the attendants said, you know, you're in Florida now, it's an anti-gay state. That's just wrong. It's just wrong to treat people that way. It's wrong to treat seniors who are taking care of one another and choose not to marry because they'll lose uh, substantial benefits. It's wrong to say, you're not a family. We will make sure that the law spitefully uh, uh, keeps you away from even the most basic kinds of protections for your family. And, and so that's why, that's what this amendment does. That's what it's about. That's what will change if we allow this to pass. The focus on trying to shore up the marriage as it currently exists before we start tackling you know, same-sex marriage and some of these other issues. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, there's no question that there's a lot of problems in society with family and children, and, and really that's the focus of all of our efforts is to strengthen families, to strengthen marriage, to strengthen these human institutions that protect children. Um, but to say the fact that there already is a bad situation in society doesn't mean that we ignore other things. So when we're looking at comprehensively, you know, looking at the problems. For instance, in no-fault divorce, I mean, this is not related to this amendment, but we would love to see um, men not be able to run away and there would be counseling before someone gets a divorce. That's a very reasonable policy. Of course, that has nothing to do with the amendment, but mandatory counseling, um, especially when there's children involved, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a powerful thing. And so, um, you know, to say that there's something already bad doesn't mean we should continue to allow that to flourish, but we're trying to look at it comprehensively. Will this ban civil unions if it's, allowed, if it's allowed to pass? Yeah, you have to define what a civil union is. Every state has a different definition. They've been around for the last nanosecond of human history. Uh, if a civil union grants a small bundle of rights, like a domestic partnership, then it would not prohibit that. If a civil union is a fake faux marriage, if it really is gay marriage, it's just, it grants all the rights and benefits and privileges of marriage, then this amendment uh, would ban it. Would you like to pose questions? We can go right into the Q&A.